Hello everyone, welcome back to another lecture. This is lesson two, it's titled WIMIS. Uh, that is the Workplace Hazardous Materials Information System. I guess the system is missing from here, but you get the idea. Workplace Hazardous Materials Information System. Um, what this is all about is the signs that you see on the chemicals that we're going to use and on some household chemicals like cleaning materials and bug spray that have warnings and what those warnings mean. Uh, they can be very, very important when working with unknown chemicals or chemicals we haven't worked with before. Um, and then also knowing what to do and how to dispose of different household chemicals. Let's get in. So WIMIS. WIMIS is a comprehensive national system for safe management of hazardous chemicals which is legislated by both the federal and provincial jurisdictions. So essentially the government uh, mandates that uh, each material has a particular sheet that is comprehensive for that chemical. Uh, it tells you everything about it, tells us all of the uh, hazards, um, what you need to do to clean it up, and how to safely manage these hazardous chemicals. So WIMIS is uh, the law, we need to follow it in our classroom. So there are different types of hazards. Flammability is one type of hazard. So flammable substances are those that readily catch fire and burn in air. Uh, flammable flame can catch fire. Um, reactivity. Some compounds are unstable and can explode under certain conditions. So some metals can explode when they're exposed to water and that's not good. You wouldn't want to build a building with one of those. Um, so it might be pressure, it might be temperature, uh, while others re react violently with water or when exposed to air. So um, this, that is a hazard when things are reactive with other uh, chemicals, especially when they are very common. Uh, and health. Contact with the chemicals can re uh, result in adverse health effects. The nature and magnitude of toxic effects will depend on many factors, including the nature of the substance and the method of exposure, like if you got it in your eyes or if you swallowed it, it went up your nose. Um, so how much of the dose, the size of the dose, and how long you were exposed to it. So these are just some different hazards, um, some different types of hazards, some things that can happen to you. Essentially, health is if it's poisonous. We're gonna get into hazard symbols, which is key point two above me. Um, so there's about 10 hazard symbols, and then there's three international symbols, all with varying degrees of um, caution within them. So we're gonna talk about hazard symbols first. If you see one like this, it means that it is a compressed gas. So this is supposed to represent a tube that has gas in it. Um, the hazard comes from the material sudden um, comes from sudden damage to the container. Essentially, it might explode when you have compressed gas. A compressed gas cylinder is usually quite heavy and when ruptured can become a projectile with the potential to cause significant damage. It is, they are very, very dangerous when they start to get moving around like a large helium tank. They can also explode if they are heated up. So compressed gas um, is this symbol. Flammable or combustible is this symbol. It's pretty clear there's a little fire in this circle. So flammable or combustible materials will ignite and continue to burn if exposed to a flame or source of ignition. So flammable or combustible is a little fire. And remember to pause this. Make sure you write everything down. You can go back and listen to what I have to say afterwards as well. Um, but make sure you get everything down that we've been talking about here. When you have a fire on top of something, that means we have an oxidizing material. That means that that material will essentially burn on its own. It doesn't need an ignition. So an oxidizing material may or may not burn itself, but will release oxygen or other substances and thereby causes or contributes to the combustion of another material. So an oxidizing substance is essentially causing this fire, whether it's, up, it's, whether it's burning or not, it's hard to say but it's releasing materials that cause this fire. So an oxidizing material is a fire on top of a circle. Um, we have poisonous and infectious materials. So there's three different kinds of poisonous materials and they all have different names. So the skull and crossbones is materials causing immediate and serious toxic effects. That's essentially if you eat it, you're gonna be poisoned immediately and have very, very bad 
outcomes. Um, the T is materials that cause other toxic effects. So maybe they don't kill you or maybe they aren't as bad. Maybe you don't feel well for a while or you have some numbness, um, but they are not good and you should still uh, get checked out. And then there's biohazardous infectious material, essentially the things that can cause infections. People wear the large suits um, when you have biohazardous material. Uh, we also um, have like containers that might have this on it for biohazards. Um, after like nurses do vaccines or people take blood for blood donations. So this is a biohazard material. So uh, materials causing immediate effects, other effects, and biohazards. Uh, we have corrosive material. So you can see the hand and the material getting burned away by this acid essentially. So corrosive material uh, can attack metals or cause permanent damage to human tissues. Such, uh, such as skin and eyes. So it's very important not to get these in your eyes. Burning, scarring, and blindness may occur. So again, pause to get this down, but corrosive material is pretty self-explanatory. We have dangerously reactive material. So we have the R with a test tube in it, and it looks like the test tube is exploding. So this is dangerously reactive, and it may react violently under a condition of shock, increase of pressure, increase of temperature, uh, it's essentially going to explode if its conditions change. It may also react uh, vigorously with water and may produce a gas that is toxic. So overall, not so great um, to have around. We're going to get into key point three, which is the international hazard symbol. So these are things that you see on your regular containers, like your bug spray uh, and your cleaning materials. Um, these are substances that are not identified with WIMIS symbols, but may cause uh, problems as well. So they, are st they still use the international hazard symbols. The shape of the hazard symbols tells us how dangerous that substance is. The more sides in the shape means the more dangerous it is. So there's going to be a symbol with a shape around it, and if the shape has a lot of sides, that means it's more dangerous. Let's see. So we have the skull and crossbones, which essentially means that it's poisonous, okay? And if it is very poisonous, it would be up here in the stop sign shape. It has more sides. This is flammable up here, so it's more flammable if it has more sides, less flammable if it has less sides in the triangle. We have explosive when heated or pressurized. That is most dangerous up here and least dangerous down here, but meaning the same thing. They're both explosive. And then we have corrosive, that is here, uh, less dangerous, and here most dangerous. In the middle is the diamond, it has the middle amount of sides. But uh, we have poisonous, so I copy this down uh, in the diagram that I have. You have poisonous here, flammable here, explosive here, and corrosive here, along with most dangerous, kind of dangerous, least dangerous. You now have in your booklet uh, some WEMIS questions. They are fairly straightforward, uh, but I want you to take the time to make sure that you get them correct, because uh, it's important that you know this for the quiz that will come up eventually. Thanks very much for watching, everyone. I appreciate it, and I'll see you soon.